Good morning. This is the town of Tuftonboro Board of Selectmen's uh, regular meeting for Monday, July 27th. Um, members of the public wishing to attend this meeting electronically, please join from your computer, tablet, or smartphone. It is slash slash global dot go to meeting dot com slash join slash nine nine six four three three nine four one. You can also listen via telephone. It's toll free at one eight seven seven three oh nine two zero seven three access code nine nine six four three three nine four one. Please note that you'll be able to interact during public input using the online service. However, you will only be able to listen to the meeting via telephone. If you have any issues attending this meeting electronically using the aforementioned instructions, please call area code 603-569-4901. Yes, is everything in working order? Uh, let us begin the meeting. Gordon, will you lead us to honor America with the pledge? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. morning. First item of business is any members of the public that would like to speak. Anybody on the line? Okay. Anyone from the public like to speak? Yes, come up right up here, sir. Just give your name to the secretary. Welcome. How are you? Good. I'm Pete Billings, the president of North Carolina Village, and I'm here this morning because Ms. Ms. Stacy has sent you folks a long letter, and I have uh, a, a very short rebuttal, and uh, it's from Christopher Albert, who is the engineer for Jones and Beach Engineering Firm, and his, it's addressed to uh, the environmental engineer and Donna Lane, who is the administrator for the CDV grant. He said, attached to ENV 1000-1024 rules on innovative treatment alternatives, the deed and the co for the co-op and the plan of record. As we have discussed, she can't do what she wants. Any ITA has to be state approved. You can't pull products off a catalog book. The manufacturers have their own tank, just can't install a tank, a product in any tank. Most ITA still requires a septic tank, then the ITA, then the disposal area. DES has approved the leach field with 75% reduction in the standard size, but it must be state approved. The park was created with open space and small lots on a community water system. You can't dissolve the park with substandard lots. Most of those lots in the park are between 15 and 16,000 square feet. And my understanding is that the uh, town planning board has a one acre minimum for lots in, in, in town. And then uh, I have all the backup materials here that I'll what, what leave with you. But it's unfortunately it's been a bit a, a waste of time for most of us, and it it just can't be done. And so what is it that can't be done? Just walk me through it all. Of it. She she sent us a letter going uh -huh. through a, going through a whole litany of different things to address the the the, right. uh, the water the sewage treatment. What she's trying to do is destroy the whole program. That's her aim. And uh, 
Sure. Well, just as as it's become very expensive to the to the park to the village. Mm -hmm. The town uh, we're having real water problems. We have no the wells are not functioning properly, and we're hauling, <coughs> we're hauling in three thousand gallons of water every four days. And the Department of Environmental Security, when we talk to them about making some changes that we want to make. And, and I'm not saying they would do this, but there was a hint that if somebody wasn't looking over their shoulders to make sure they dotted the I's and crossed the T's, then some of these things would have sailed right through. As it is now, we're having to pay things right out of our pockets. Uh, so it's been not good for us. Leave that with the second okay. Any Thank other you questions? very much for your time, gentlemen. So is, is, Thank you. Has she taken you to court? <laughs> I think if she can find somebody to go with her, she will. But I, so far, from what I understand, most of the um, uh, legal services that you don't charge, they, they, they so many. I mean, short of a court order, none of the things you've talked about. Yeah, are enforceable. I mean, I, I think of the zoning, for instance. That little home park has been there for a long, long time. Yeah. In fact, I kind of vaguely remember when it went in. And as far as substandard lots are concerned, that's the it's water way over the bridge. Unless you want to put a well and a septic tank on each lot, we can't do that because you don't have space. Right. And uh, you can so, that. Well. Thank you. Thank you All very much. Thank, thank you for your in. patience and your. I beg your pardon. Thank you for your patience and your vigilance. <laughs> okay. And be safe. Okay. By the way, I also should make you aware that although she is a resident of the park, she is not a member of the cooperative. She's been uh, she's been kicked out of the cooperative, and uh, so anything she says. Is, that a, is, is as a citizen, not as a park member. Okay? Thank you for Thank your you uh, energy. No one else from the public? And again, no one on the line? Uh, let's review, uh, go on to review of minutes. First up is July 10th, public. I have no issues. I'll move approval. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Uh, the non-public for July 10th. Uh, I will move approval. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Uh, minutes, public minutes for 7-13-20. That was a work session, right? Uh, I can't remember. No, no that's a regular meeting. Okay, regular meeting. Uh, I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes 3-0. And for the work session, Friday, July 17th. Move approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Good job. Uh, we're a little ahead of schedule, so we'll move on to appointments. Good morning, Chief. Good morning. Fairly short. That's what we like. As of uh, yesterday, we had 115 fire calls, 143 medical calls, 27 service calls, seven special details for 292, 23 gas furnace uh, inspections, 
three oil burner inspections, wood pellet stoves three, life safety 13 for a total of 42. Amulets one has had its state EMS inspection that was completed on the 23rd. The ambulance passed its inspection and it's good until 2022. The department had its first confirmed COVID-19 response on 7-8-20. The systems in place worked out well for uh, the call. The Tufton Merle Ambulance transported the patient at medic level to Concord Hospital after talking to a medical control at Huggins Hospital. Personnel from Stewart's Ambulance assisted with the call. All proper decoding of personnel <laughs> equipment and ambulance took place on uh, on this call. That person was confirmed as? Okay. Yes, and and it was a, a situation that through 911 we had advance notice because the place was marked, obviously, through 911, so we were able to be suited up before we even got out of the ambulance uh, on that particular call. So, every, as I said, everything worked out well with, with those particular uh, um, things that were put in place to, for advanced notification. Good job. Um, Fail-safe hose and ladder testing came in on 624. They tested 17,478 feet of uh, fire hose, and only 100 feet failed in the, in the testing. It was two lengths of uh, inch and three quarter. The 14 ladders all passed inspection. The total for the inspections were $6,073.40. The department stipend reimbursement uh, from the state for the fire side finally came through. For a total of $24,442.91, all funds had been dispersed previously, and the remaining approximately $3,978.61 um, that was not used will be returned as required by the, uh, the state. The department currently has paperwork out for three applicants who would like to join the department. I'm currently following up on the background checks driving records and the reference and everything that goes along with uh, um, bringing someone in in the call department side of things. And we didn't use the $3,978 code? Yeah, there was uh, a couple personnel that didn't meet the criteria as far as uh, they were in weren't the available um, or weren't um, currently in good standings as far as department-wise at that, that point in time. Um, so that could not be given to them as far as uh, the, the portion that they would be getting. The two lengths of hose that failed, uh, you're purchasing replacements? Yes. I mean, yes we'll, we've got money to do that, right? Yep. Perfect. Yep, we do. Well, each year we try to put in for a certain amount of hose in case something does uh, fail, and and we did put uh, money in the budget for. for so that. how available is that hose? I mean, is this? It's something that we can order and have in you know, like a couple of weeks. Fire up from three miles away. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's amazing between all the apparatus and uh, the hose that you have on the. Uh, it adds up, doesn't it? It, it adds up really quickly. You know, between the boats and uh, mm -hmm. and all the different stuff, so uh, it's amazing. Um, it actually, we I initially had said that it was approximately uh, fourteen thousand seven hundred feet, but over the uh, period of time, um, since my last update, there was some hose that we had missed on the boat. Um, it didn't get tested uh, in one year, and. Uh, some other hose that uh, that we had purchased uh, over the, the period of time in between. So uh, it, it pumped that uh, number up a little bit. Um, I did receive the email from Karen in reference to the uh, um, cell towers. Right. Um, I saw that Saturday morning. It came in Friday. Um, so I haven't had a chance to look at that. I have a concern about um, where they're saying that our equipment can go on the tower. Initially, they said they could go at the top, and I think that uh, I was seeing something about 90 feet up on the tower, so there's a change. Right, there's a section, I've been reading, uh, 
in the grant that delineates where your stuff is going to go, and I just want to make sure it works. Yep. Yeah. So I, I would like to look at that further before I give you any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Haven't they also updated? Asked to change the maximum height. I thought I read. I don't know. I mean, it, it's a little hard to figure out because at the beginning of this, it has no height restriction or height uh, maximum. But then in the body of the document, it talks about 135 feet. Right, and, and I believe the town does have a restriction on height. As far as that goes, depending on um, whether or not it's beneficial for the town to to go higher, from what I have read in the past. Yeah, and this is. It's. I think that's a negotiable point with the planning board, but I also think that we need to get a little more certain <coughs> with these guys what what they're doing. Right. I mean, they're obviously. Their lawyers are getting paid by the word because the stocking is expanding. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot bigger document. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Any, we have the uh, engineer for Union Wharf community today at 10. Okay. Any concerns or whatever you might have on the placement of a fire boat or what we're going to be doing down there? Uh, I guess the only concern that I have is that we can continue to continuously uh, get in and out you know, fairly easily as far as that goes. If there's going to be any adjustments with the way that we hook up to the electrical, just need to know that you know, in advance as far as it goes. Um, I'd like to see, obviously, um, the end redone because it is it does have some unsafe sections in it now that kind of recommendation to that effect to our office. Okay. Because we're gonna be confronting DES at some point in time about their change of mind. Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. I understand that the option of sheet piling eliminates the hole you have to step over. Right. If, Am I correct in that assumption? I believe so. And I understand the latest iteration from the, the state is the newest section doesn't need sheet piling. Is, is that your understanding, or is that still negotiated? Yeah, the cement they're saying doesn't need it. I mean, our position, I hope, is going to be that we only want to visit this once during the remainder of our lifetimes. Yes, so we can get all of the solid surface encased, and then. There'll be bumpers and everything else on the outside of it. So you look at the dock. I agree with what you guys are saying. But, and I'll, I'll, I'll get an idea from, I don't know if I can remember that long from now. Okay. Um, we're, we don't have the money to do the repair this year. Sure. It's going to be a uh, Warren article next year. What the time will be, I mean, um, the engineer will be able to tell us how long it will take and sure. perhaps so, we'll do it. So, so part of part of what goes into this whole equation in terms of the project is we want to do it when we do it in such a way that it doesn't prevent us from using the fireboat right. uh, during when the project's going on. Right. Uh, you know, and uh, whether that means that Maybe it has to temporarily relocate, right? Uh, okay. Or they can work around it and move it up and down the wharf. I don't know, but certainly that's a consideration. But when it's all said and done, the location it's at now and the way you hook up works well. Yes, right. Yes. Okay. It's just the uh, deterioration of some of the physical elements of right. the wharf that are. And I guess the only thing that I would ask is if we have money in the budget to, if they haven't been replaced, there was a couple boards. Yeah. That are that are really funky. I haven't been down there this week, so I I don't know. On the wooden section at the end. Yeah, just the wooden mm -hmm. section. Um, there was like two boards in between that uh, that were pushing right down, and a couple there was cones there um, to mark them. Uh, yeah, something that we need to that chat, was, with, chat with Jack about. That's that has been completed. Okay. Very good. Yeah, because we don't have to get permits for that. No, no, right. Okay. 
Do you have anything further as far as? Yeah. I don't think so, but uh, what an encouraging sign that you have three people stepping up that want to join the fire department. That's terrific. Isn't it great? Yeah. Hopefully they're not my age. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, um, they're they're all fairly fairly young. Uh, two were just moving, have just moved into town, or they're temporary living in town where they build a house, uh, moving from Tamil, and one just got out of the military. Oh, um, he's great. Right. He was uh, did sonar and things like that uh, on submarines. Um, be and just uh, moved to a federal corner for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but. We'll go through that, and there was one other gentleman that uh, is retired um, that had showed interest, and I could get a packet out. To him. He's from Captain Burlak. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if you have nothing for me, thank you. Maybe uh, third quarter, let's say September, we can get a, a report on the revenues. Yep. Right, and, and we haven't uh, we haven't done a huge amount of transport this year compared to uh, um, years last, but I'll I'll get that information for you. Great, thanks. And it's already time to think about planning about budget season. I would, mm -hmm. I would and, but that, I think so. we only signed a one year with Stewart. Yes, so we got to figure out what we're going to do. That. Yep. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Steve, sir. Thank you. Thanks. As Marty Hall would say, come on down. <laughs> How are you? The reason I am here this morning is that in June, Charles announced to the trustees that she wanted to retire at the end of September. Uh, subsequent to that, she uh, came back to us a couple years later, a couple weeks later, and said because of uh, some family commitments, she wanted to move that to the end of August. So she will be retiring. With that in mind, we sat as trustees and decided, well, what are we going to do? And uh, we uh, asked for interest within the uh, within the uh, staff. And after uh, a long interview, we have decided to uh, appoint Dennis Gilmet as our new director for the library. As part of this, also, we are going to be establishing a position in moving uh, Lynn Dancout up to uh, coordinator of circulation and youth services, the emphasis on the youth services. We feel that it's very important that uh, we can develop more, pro more programs for children as time goes on. Is Dennis handling the IT? Yes. Originally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He will still be doing He's that. He's going to still do that? Yes. But which is why we're, why we're moving it up. In responsibilities and content, and also in, as part of her pay scale, to uh, to deal with more of the youth programs and the other programming involved in the library. Uh, as part of this whole uh, shuffle, we are going to be uh, we need to hire somebody to replace uh, Marianne, retired earlier in the year. We are also going to be moving uh, Deidre Zimmerside up to a desk assistant from a position she had as Paige. And uh, the only other new hire we're going to be needing is going to be a, a library page, but we're going to hold that until we see how the... Uh, is that really a thing? I thought it was all Paige, I think, for the library. Hmm? Go, kaboom, Shane. Yeah, try to be able to. Yeah. The long and short in all of this is that our payroll is going to be under than what it is right now, for the balance, certainly for the balance for the year. And by the recommended pay scales that we're going with, uh, we'll still be within our budget numbers for next year, even if you just <laughs> what you folks do is a, a so on Dennis's pay of 
grade 16 level level 11 yes what was Chris, what's Christy getting paid currently she was at 16 15 so was she she in the years. Years. Hmm? and what is what's Dennis currently getting Dennis is currently at 10 and 15 and how much of an hour of that uh, 10 and 15 is 2521. My only concern is that Dennis is considerably younger. You're only allowing yourself four years to be at Christie's if, if you do annual grade up um, increases. He's also had 12 years experience in the, in the library. Both he and Lynn have been there for 12 years. Yeah, no, I'm not questioning his, his okay. abilities. Yeah. I'm just wondering what in four years' time we're going to be beyond Christie's current salary level and we're going to go into higher levels. Um, so, I mean, you're within budget now, but how's that going to play out going forward? I mean, you're going to play, it's going to play out based on level of responsibility. Yeah. It, it, that's wonderful. I appreciate that. Yeah. You're not giving yourself any room. You're going from twenty-five dollars to thirty-one dollars. Well, that's a, you're actually correct. Okay. However, the level of responsibility is uh, exponentially increased as well. <coughs> so we're trying to we were trying to get we were trying to get the levels commensurate with the level of responsibility. It's your budget. I'm, I'm just bringing no, up. No, I understand that. I understand. 20% pay increase. I said my piece. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So that's where we are. And those are the, uh, those are the numbers and uh, that we uh, propose going forward. And as I said, the, uh, the uh, page position will only be filled obviously after we open again. And uh, based on the needs of the field happen at the time. So that's my information on that. And it's not open now, the library. No, at our meeting in, uh, our, at our trustees meeting in August, that's where we're gonna be going, we're trying to figure out how we're gonna get the building back open. Yeah. Some libraries have opened uh, in a, a part-time basis. Uh, Wolfboro is letting people in. Some people are still doing it on the on-call basis the way we are, and then some libraries have never even just locked, you know, when this whole thing started, just locked the doors and walked away. Right. So we are most anxious to get reopened because, you know, we didn't build that building for nothing. We want people to use it and enjoy it because that's that's part of the community. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how you use social distancing in the library, but I'm sure it's manageable. Well, it is, but then again, when you talk to the folks in Wolfboro, they spend an awful lot of time. You know, they have a staff of 13 in Wolfboro. They spend an awful lot of time just walking behind people. Somebody picks up a book, looks at it, puts it oh, back. Yeah, you clean they'll it. go back and they'll, they'll wipe it down. And they're still quarantining, quarantining all their returns the way we are. And uh, this is this is. It's hard times in the business because it just makes you know, so much different. And the only, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask, is Dennis going to be bringing the report forward? Yes. Okay. So yeah. will Christy be with him on a, on a visit here? For this? Yeah, generally the library. When do they report? She was kind of a little bit off schedule, but I think she's not coming to Yeah. Next so month we'll be doing it. He'll be doing we get the transition, mm -hmm. and he understands the process. Oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah, make sure he does. Yeah. Okay. And the only other thing I want to talk to you about this morning is that you know the the, the building is virtually done. Uh, and if you remember back in the Warren article, it was X amount of money for capital reserve, IRA funds, and then dollars to be raised by taxes. And the dollars raised by taxes that was three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Uh, I'd like to be able to tell you this morning that pending anything major that we're not aware of, there's still $33,318 in that fund that we're not going to need. Great. Right? Nice. So the building came in on time and under our budget. And the systems are all set to go or regulated and all that? Well, we're, there's still some things we're going to have to buy, but we, have, you know, money had subsequently come in after town meeting. And so we have enough money still in our funds because we need to buy 
chairs for the meeting room, some you know, bits and pieces of furniture here and there all the way. But uh, we have the money there to do that. So. Well, it's any, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself, but I wouldn't deplete the library's reserves if there's something that the town needs to. If, we, if you've got $30,000 worth of money from the board article, certainly we uh, would use part or all of that if you need it rather than re reducing your reserves to. No, 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 no. We, the, the point of the matter is that we, we feel we don't need it. Okay. We feel we don't want the town to spend it because. This is additional money that came in for the exactly. donations for library construction, right? Exactly. Beyond what yeah. you had before. And a couple yeah. of rather good sized, uh, a couple of really good sized donations came in after the fact. And after the fact being like within the last three or four months. Sure. So, yeah. So we're going to be able to furnish the building the way we would like to. It's going to be comfortable. People can come in and use it, use use the space for what it was designed to do. And it's, and it's not the first municipal project that I'm aware of where there's been, call it a public partner, public-private partnership with donated dollars that once the project's underway, it generates excitement among people and generates additional donations of money to... Sometimes that happens. Yeah. So that's, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking historically, since I've been a selectman, we've had a number of projects that have come in under the uh, yeah. warrant article. And in each instance, I think 10% was set aside just in case of a catastrophic or unforeseen. Well, we have you know, everything had contingencies, but we, uh, and I'll go, I'll go on the record right now, an awful lot of those dollars savings came as a result of our construction management team. Absolutely. They, they did they, a terrific yeah, job. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely unbelievable job they they did for the uh, town. It was a good marriage. For the yeah, it really did. Yep. So, and that's all I have. That's all great news. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Gordon. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Sure and be safe. Budget here. Oh yes. Yeah. Time, uh, time to put on the other hat. Right on the goals. Be safe now. Chief. Good morning. How are you doing? All right. Check the years. just getting here. Huh? Biggest changes in motor vehicle stops and summonses over the last year. Still working on you know, some of the grant information to get out. Uh, and kind of busy with a few things coming up. Significant case came through that we've been working on. Uh, it's an older case that's just come to light recently, from several years back. So. Takes a little more time to go back through it. Uh, we're also, um, I've been paying attention to the police accountability commission meetings and what's coming out of that. Uh, one of the issues that's going to come up this year is, and, and also the changes due to training, because we have certain requirements we have to meet, but there's no Usually by this time of the year, we'll have a schedule from the academy as to what in-service training will be available, but they have um, not released a schedule and may not have much for in-service training this year. Uh, they have to take a, every state department has been ordered to do a 20% cut in funding and a hiring freeze. So they are with a state department that is being cut and- the state required that? Every state agency is within required the state, within the state government they because of, because of concerns of lack of income for yeah. due to COVID. Every state agency has been asked to do a 20% cut. How that's affected training is there there won't be any outside uh, vendors coming in for training. There won't be 
they may not be able to fill any open positions and they've got a few and they've got another one that they expect by the end of the year. Um, as far as like academy training, it's been, uh, it's been a day academy. Uh, that's how they're doing it now. So it's, uh, it's impacting it. And now they're talking extra demands for certain training. And a lot of the way that we would get our, we're required to get eight hours of in-service training every year and can't be use of force. So that actually works out to 12 hours if you include the use of force. But the eight hours, typically we go down there for a couple of days for different classes. And it looks like those probably won't be so easily available. You're and, not doing Zoom or any of that? Uh, the, the Academy has not. We There is some that we're looking at that is uh, webinars, remote training. So we'll be dealing with some of that, but that's how we'll have to get our uh, in-service training for the year. So I'm starting to look at planning out for the rest of the year for doing that because we have to get that done. Um, is there any possibility of bringing a trainer here? Would that be a There may be, but Right now, we've got some training coming up. We're working on, and I know the academy is working on some on implicit bias, and uh, so they're, they're probably that's where they're putting their focus. So we'll, we'll be sending people to that when it comes around. And there is some training webinars that we're going to be participating in and going to. They're, they have a training coming up, a three-hour training coming up on reunification for. Uh, there was an incident in a school reunifying parents and, and children. That sort of stuff is going on. That's put on with Homeland Security, and, and this, I believe it's based upon Secret Service training on how to what they've found from school shootings and stuff. Anyway, we, there is going to be some training, but it's going to be tougher to get than in the past. And I don't know what in-service training we'll be able to get for free through the academy, but we'll get it. I've had I put together an ad for the administrative assistant position. I haven't got it to Karen yet to get out, but I put that together. Uh, the cruiser should be registered soon, I'm hoping, waiting for the state to come back with the plate for that. Um, the new one, and then... No, the stickers no longer are on it now? Nope, they're down in the basement, not on yet. I had to lay them out so they get flat before they go on. <clears throat> so the price I got through... What we've done in the past, we've gone through two-way communication, which is now called Nevo. In Newington, they put the stickers on, they put everything in, they put a remote starter in. Tomorrow afternoon, I've got an appointment with OM Because their price is over 10000 I think it would be in compliance with the purchasing policy of the town. I have to get more than one price. Going to OME to see what their price will be for a similar install. I do not know if they will do the stickers. I do not know if they will do a remote starter. Uh, that's where the, so we, I may have to look at apples and oranges to some degree and use other vendors to get the same package together, if you will. So that's where that's at. So hopefully this week I should have the plates for that. I got a call last week from the state saying that it should be done this week, at least the temporary plate for it. Then I have to order the print the metal one. Uh, I've got my final few hours. I'm going to get the radar trailer working again. It was down and started and then stopped working. So I got to figure out what happened there. I think it has to do with a couple of factors. Uh, I just have to hook up some, some wires weren't in there very tight. So I got to tighten them back up and do some other things to make sure it's ready to go. The other sign is up. Are you happy with the full monitored unit that you have? So let me let me rephrase my okay. question. Uh, <laughs> it's, if, it's if, okay. if you were to buy another one, would you buy the same one or would you buy something different? So I like that one for where it's for. It's on it on our town roads. Right. It's, it's easily changeable the messages. Uh, there was a place in Vermont that had theirs up in the winter and they put, you know, uh, if you were speeding, it said naughty. And if you were going below the speed limit, it said nice just before Christmas. Uh, you know, so you can change the messaging and, and you can change the colors 
of the display. So if ours, for example, if you're speeding, it goes red. If, it, if you're not, it's green. Um, problems with that one is it's not as not as usable as if we had one that were a little different. Um, the one that Moulton Borough has, I think Center Harbor has the same one, is smaller. Mm -hmm. But because of its size you, and its mount type, you can put it, you can co-locate it on, a, on the state roads. It has to be with a speed sign. Um, that would be kind of nice because obviously we have complaints of speeders in different areas, not just on the town roads. That's what I was, that's, so that would be, a, I think the money was about the same though. That's what's kind of frustrating. They turned, in my opinion. So the answer to his question is you get a slightly different model. I get a slightly different model would be, a, would be my, my thought is what I would, and ideally. I thought, I, we, I thought we had two original. No, we, 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 have have trailer, we have a trailer, trailer mounted unit and then the one that's on the side. A number of different locations. That we, we have three locations that we can put it, three posts. I can. I could get more posts and mounts if we wanted to put it up in other places. I just need a fairly straight spot, a spot that's safe for us to pull over and change the batteries and mount it. It's, it's not, you can't just put it anywhere. And it gathers data that you can download. And there is data that can be downloaded from it, yes. Yep. So we've got the road agent task on finding better stop signs for up at the end of Ledge Hill Road and the, and Durgan Road. Okay. With flashing lights and a little solar panel. Okay. So that would show up as well. I don't know how many of you is that that a, is that our sign or the state's? No, it's it's on our road. It's on our road, it's our responsibility. Okay. Yeah. The state has some control over it because it intersects with theirs. Right. right. Uh, so and I know I, no matter what it has to comply with the manual of uniform traffic control devices. Okay. It's uh, the federal book about that thick right. if you printed it out of, right. uh, of how what you, what roads yeah, have yeah, to so the stop signs here to. look like the ones that we see in the states, right. not the ones you see in Quebec, for instance. Yeah. They're a little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many of your 200 um, traffic violations involve running stop signs, but I know that I've actually witnessed the running of that stop sign on two occasions. I haven't seen it lately when I was on duty. I think I've seen it off duty, and I've seen it, I, you know, another thing that I, kind of, uh, and I'm going to put something on our Facebook page about bicyclists because they're required to stop. As they're well. required to stop too. And I see them below the stop signs and I had a young man almost pull out across the road in front of me. He was riding all over the 109A out here. And then when I, he did it because he's going slow. I wanted to go around him. And then just after I passed, he cut over without even like looking at my, you know, so. You want to say, you, you do understand there's nothing around you. <laughs> if you run into something, it's uh, it's your body. Yeah. All right. Yes. Do you folks want to talk about the email about the people out there? I don't know where they're going. About what? They wanted to have someone send an email and request me. Somebody's speeding on number nine road. Right, we can share that with the. I, I saw that. I, I will take a look at it. I don't know. I don't know where they're going on number nine road. They have to be going into Baxter Woods, I suspect, but. Or yeah, coming out of it. Short way down. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I, I'm familiar with I saw it. And, uh, I'll take a look at it. I haven't I usually several times a week go through there and I haven't seen anybody. I'm not saying they don't happen. There's some kids on Baxter Woods, so I'm sure that's probably where it's more likely coming from than anything. The following are questions I have I've been asked about by citizens. Okay. What's the situation on hiring 
for the clerical position. That's what I just said. Is I've got the address done, and I'll be we'll be putting it out. This is strictly a suggestion that was made to me. Does it make sense for the selectmen to work with you to get someone temporarily there to help take the load off uh, your shoulders? That question was asked of me, and I said I'll pass it on. Uh, no. How many hours are you advertising for? It'd be 20. 20? That's what I'm budgeted at. Okay. Uh, the next thing I've been asked about is the EOC paperwork came in at the new station. Did you read that? Did you get a copy of it? I got it from Philly, sent some information yeah. on it. I haven't had a chance to go through it fully. Uh, kind of looks like it's equipment more than facility. It kind of didn't sound too promising if you, if, it's how I looked at it anyways, but it was a quick breeze through. Um, I've got to go through that. I've got to go through the um, cell tower that was sent yep. to me to look at too. So I got to take a look at that. See if there's any issues. With, I just printed that off so I can take a look at it. Fixed equipment or mobile equipment? It sounded like it was, like you could say, desks or a radio or... It's in our correspondence. It's in the correspondence, but I read it to be mostly, they're not going to pay for facility like walls, but they might pay for facility-specific items that would make it usable as an EOC. Well, as I recall from Phil's email, um, it appears that the grant program may be different than the last time they worked with it in terms of what it covers. It he, was gonna, he was going to do some more legwork to yeah. it try and flesh that out a little bit. As we're saying, equipment again, 4,000 square foot facility is not cheap. Here we have lockers, desks, chairs, evidence lockers. Absolutely. It has to be towards what's making it an EOC. So you might have uh, a large. Uh, TV for you know for train for that you can put up situational stuff. It might be cameras. Uh, I, that, that's what kind of rolls through my mind. I got to look at it again. But it also to go with that as years have gone along since 9/11, the money has gone down each year, and the criteria has changed over the years uh, for those homeland security type funding. Right. I had some other comments that were made to me in a constructive nature. As far as the radar trailer, is there someone that's trustworthy or reliable in town that could help with the maintenance on it and the batteries and the wiring? You quite frankly have a full plate. And, uh, is there someone we can recruit for you or you can recruit? Or are you the only person who can work on that trailer? Probably not the only person, but it still would require somebody from the department to coordinate it to let them in to work on it. And it's really just, a, it's not. It's not something you can deliver to a shop. Quite frankly, the time it would take to deliver it is probably about the time it would, you know, I'd have to go to Newington as a closest shop that could work on it. Is there a person in town? Yeah, deliver we're going to work on it, so I'm not seeing that as... I don't know if there's somebody in town that could work on it. I might be able to see if somebody could, but it's really, to be honest with you, it's a matter of screwing some wires in and, and checking the batteries. So to hook it up and drive it somewhere is probably about the same as finding the time to, to do so. Well, as a selectman, if I can find some resources that would assist you, uh, these cases you're working on and training your people. Um, I'll certainly take a look at it if you have some resources that you sure. find. Uh, the new cruiser, um, do you have a target date that it's going to be operational? Nope. It depends on how soon I can get the three bids and how soon I can get the work done and they can schedule it. Uh, so I can't right. give a definite number. I know the, are you still waiting? Excuse me. Are you still waiting for uh, some of the components, or has all that stuff come together? Pretty much all the components are here. Uh, I have to make a decision on the radio. Um, I've been. I get to talk. To, uh, I will probably do the Motorola, which is more expensive, like we said, but I'll, I'll just work on that. That should only take a few weeks to get here. So it's probably 
once I get the three bids, once I <clears throat> make a decision, we make a decision as to who it will be, then we can. But so we're not in a position today, even if you knew who was going to do it, to get the updating done because we don't have all the stuff to go on, right? Right. The certain components that I have to order, right. and the certain components that they would, once they, you know, somebody might say, I want to work with Satina, somebody else might say, I want to work with ProGuard parts. They do the same thing, I don't care. But they've got to figure out when it's going to be shipped into them. So I, I really couldn't venture a guess how long it would take. Also, I was asked the last new vehicle the town got Jack's vehicle. They did the undercoating with the wax undercoating. It was done up in Tamworth. Are you considering that for the new cruiser? I will once it's upfitted. Probably look at that. Yes. Okay. And it has to be registered, obviously, to take it there. <laughs> yeah. I mean this. Candidly, as I can say, if people have asked me, is there any way that the new cruiser can put, be put in the garage? Thank you. Not really, because I have file cabinets and stuff out there, so there's no way to... The garage barely fits a cruiser as it was, and there's file cabinets out there to store records on top of the other stuff that's out there, so there's no real way to do that. Okay. Anything else for the chief? No. Oh, any any issues on Friday? Was Friday uh, Island Day? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, according to what uh, Clay said, it went fine. Right? So you aren't aware of any. I mean, in the past, we've had some issues with people trying to drop stuff off at the wrong time. Yeah, so Clay had told me about it. I came out early that morning to, and They'd already delivered it early too, so uh, he said there was no issues. He in fact he thanked me for it because he said it went good. But it, I think making it a Friday made it, you know, probably fewer people around, a little less likely for people to be there early in the morning. To, you know, they weren't staying over Friday night, being able to come really? in. I find that absolutely an untenable idea. What's that? Ninety-nine percent of the people that come up here for the summer. Yeah. They're not working. Yeah, I just I think Friday is a fine day to have. No, Friday Friday is a good day. I'm just saying it makes it probably a little less likely that people are gonna. I I suspect I don't know. I'm not living on one of the islands. I don't know, but I I kind of think. I mean, we see more cars on weekends than we do on during the week. So Thursday night, there's fewer cars in the town parking lot and along the road. So I'm thinking there's, there's probably a few there's less. There's still a lot of people that are There's still a lot of people that are up for the summer and, and you know, remote working, there's still there's people are here anyways. Or, and there hasn't been any school. So concert series started. Was there any? That was canceled last week. Oh, what? Right. You know, something like that. It's just thunder, but it was canceled. Yeah. Okay. So, so when we last talked, you were going to do some looking at the parking regs. There were some questions with respect to. I've been looking at that. I talked with Jim about the signs. Um, I wonder, I mean, Mirror Lake, most of the time there's one car. The other day there were three there by that Mirror Lake ramp, one on each side and one along the road. I mean, I guess that's, I mean, we, we talked about that as to whether you want. As far as the regs, I, I, I remember I was asked to write a brief thing. I'll put something together on that. Okay. I need to uh, spell out some of the conflicts and where we need to go mm -hmm. forward. All right. Thanks, Chief. Be safe. Dennis, come on down. Good morning, sir. It's a tough Monday. I got to face you guys, and then I got the guys right after this. It's going to be a fun day. Good. Okay, everyone doing all that? Yes. Yeah. The first thing we got to talk about is the beach. You want to talk about that? We're about halfway through the summer. Uh, I think when this whole thing hit, people panicked with, you know, parking attendants, all this stuff. It's been a little busier than we have been. But no issues. I'm very happy with the trash, the mowing, the portalettes, 
the girl working part time as maintenance. And you can believe what you want on Facebook and that other forum, whatever it is. It's a pack of lies. The trash has been. There was one day where trash was full, and there was a full trash bag near the trash. I've been here every day. The most I've seen is 12 cars. Saturday, there was 17 cars there. So as of now, us being the, the hands-off uh, approach has worked. However, Booster Beach closing August 1st. And I'm going to tell you this, too. There, there's been a lot of non-residents. When I'm there, I talk to people, people from all from Farmington, Rochester. Uh, and I think we're into our second heat wave right now, so that might be something we got to look at. Uh, there was one resident that had called me last week. Actually got poor Karen, and Karen held her off a little bit, but uh, I ended up speaking with her for about 20 minutes. She wanted to know the procedure of how Wolfboro did it, how she would do it here about making residents only. Okay. I said, first of all, it's going to be a whole procedure. I'm going to bring it up in front of the selectmen. I says, and we're going to keep the same approach. We're going to be hands off. If it gets to be a problem within the next month, I'll put a barricade up, hire a kid, and just let tough and broke people park there. Everyone else can walk in, similar to Wolfboro. But right now, I think we just got to stay with what we're doing uh, I know there's been some issues with uh, there was a needle found at 20 mile bay last week or, uh, but I think as the overall beach is concerned they're all social distancing pretty good even in the water uh, like I say I've been there every day different times the girl has done a pretty good job sometimes when she comes it's hard for the rake the beach because there's people there but uh, there's some little maintenance issue. I want to thank Lloyd. He did put up a barricade where they were bringing in their boats through the garden, and one of them fell, and I see you fixed that. So thank you for that. Uh, there's a little fence issue. Uh, you know, but it has been a little busy, and I think we just got to, you know, basically uh, see how it goes. Uh, so any comments or questions on, on the beach? Nope, you only plow snow during a snowstorm. That's it. That's it. <coughs> I haven't had any yeah. no. complaints. I, I've been there very early. Yeah. I, uh, I, I would only offer that I thought of, I, I was disappointed that Wolfboro decided they were going to erect barriers around their facilities. And I certainly wouldn't want to see Tufton Road do the same thing. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean, a barrier. Well, the, you have to live in Wolfboro to use their beach, right? right? I, I, I was disappointed to see that they did that, and I certainly wouldn't want us to pursue the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, there is talk out there of. So I, again, I well, they close on Brewster Beach for what reason? Well, Booster, the kids are coming back early, and they're going to quarantine them, so they want the Booster Beach for the students. If they own the beach. They own it, so as of August 1st, they will. And, you know, there's been pictures on Facebook where both sides of the street how, going up. How? Been, I, I guess it's a rhetorical question because it's Wolfboro and they do whatever they want to do. You grew up in Wolfboro, right? right? Yes. <laughs> how, was, how is it that they can expend public funds on a private property? How's that work? They lease it for like a dollar a day. Yeah. It's a 10 year lease, I think. Yeah, for the whole beach. Yeah. For the whole year. Yeah, well. And now all of a sudden it's closed. I mean, this seems to be typical Wolfboro sort of dancing around reality. I mean, people can park at the Nick and outside of it and walk into Cary Beach and to Albee Beach. They just can't park in there. Mm -hmm. So that's a bit of a walk. Yeah, it's a good walk. No, I know. So, I mean, if it's okay with you guys, I like to just proceed the way we're going and make a decision that. Uh, you know, there are a couple issues, you know, like an out-of-town, there was a birthday. We had a tie-dye program there on Saturday, man, a good turnout. But right after the tie-dye, someone's setting up for a birthday, but then someone from 
uh, Farmington show up and they'll put a cooler on this table, take this table, take this, you know what I'm saying? So there's got to be a way to monitor that. And as far as, and I told the girl, I said, if you told me about the birthday, I would have reserved it for two hours for you. You know, so uh, outside of that, I think it, it, it's a work in progress. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know you have a number of activities and programs going in addition to just use of the beach. And I think a lot of those are at the beach. Is that, yeah. Is that right? Um, given the level of activity at the beach, maybe it makes sense to do some of these activities like at Central Park. That, yeah. That is uh, minimally used. Right. Th then, then we're not increasing the amount of uh, yeah. congestion. I, I just, at the my beach. own opinion is I think that atmosphere at the beach is outstanding. You know. Whether it be a concert, whether it be the picnic, whether I'm going to talk a little bit about trying to get an employee. It out. is, but it's not the only facility. No, I know. That. I mean, yeah, we are yeah. going to run a drive-in movie up at Davis Field uh, yeah. doing part of those home days. So, uh, but no, you're right. You're right. Um, and I, I'm just thinking some of these activities. I mean, if it's if it's related to being in the water, then it makes sense to have it at the beach. Right. But I'm not sure that cornhole. Can't well, I, I think, the, again, the atmosphere there, I mean, we got a group of 20 people. I got 10 teams. I could have had 20 teams. Unfortunately, I only got enough of 10, 10 teams playing at one time. Uh, and I want to thank Kingswood High School for letting us use their, their cornhole boards. But that group right there, potentially, I mean, whether you run a co-ed dodgeball league, co-ed kickball league, they're hungry for activities, so and they like it. Though. Are you suggesting that if we had them at Central Park rather than at the beach, you wouldn't have as many people come out? No, I'm not the saying that. I'm just saying the atmosphere is better at the beach down there. For cornhole? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. See, and, what, I don't and, see what difference it makes other than there are a lot more people around at the beach. Well, you know, the, the cornhole people bring spectators. Right. Uh, and a lot of them swim after. A lot of them have their kids and swimming. Well, it's just like a concert. Would a concert saying, be, be better in the, outside here or at the beach? What's well, obviously be better at the beach? Which you've already said is getting kind of overcrowded in terms of parking and use of the beach. So I'm just saying non-beach kind of activities, if we do them someplace else, and that reduces the, the yeah. crowding issue. I think that's my decision, and I think I made it. You did? Yeah. And And I'm just <laughs> suggesting that for some of these activities, right. not having all the activities at the beach is not a bad idea. I agree. I agree. And I think, you know, when we canceled everything, we, we come out of this pretty good. I mean, last week we had five activities. We canceled the concert because of the rain. We had tie-dye. We had cornhole. We had two days of yoga. So, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, I mean, I'm not running a Bay Roof League. I'm not, you know... I, so anyway, and it is a, a limited season. I mean, you think about it, the end of June to the first of September. Yeah, that's it. You're utilizing an asset, but and and I have to agree that Dennis is deficient. We can yell at him, but we can't fire him. Anything else, Dennis? Anything else? Uh, just a couple things. Um, the home days, old home days. The the uh, sponsorship letter is going out this week. We got a brochure with what's happening, and nothing against the old committee, but basically they've all gone south. I'm pretty much running this by myself, okay? Uh, so, I mean, we do have a bunch of activities, a mini golf, movie under the stars. We've got a concert that was canceled last Thursday. We moved as part of old home days on that Thursday. We still have the craft farmer's market with the historical society. We have a cornhole tournament. That's at the beach, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we have live music, uh, a cardboard boat race, the town picnic, and the nature and scavenger hunt. So, again, social distancing. I just spoke with the chief about cooking at the town picnic, and they're going to do it, but we got to change the way we do business. We can't have all those hot dogs out like we used to and all those hamburgers. It's basically people can't bring salads and stuff like that. It's going to be, here's your hamburger, here's your bag of chips, go listen to the music type of thing. And we're going to social distance it. And again, uh, we're changing it up a little bit from the fire station to the beach. <laughs> the final thing I'd like to speak about, 
by the way, this is a shirt for the champions of the cornhole. We went to our second week. We got uh, five more weeks, 27 feet, it says. Hmm. So, uh, are you the artist? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> the other thing, I found out there was an account last year you guys didn't use, on and volunteers and stuff like that. I'd like to try and plan, and the date I come up with is September 10th, Thursday after Labor Day, a half-day employee outing. Down at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman next door to the beach would be giving boat rides. We've got kayaks. We've got paddle boards. We'd run a corner tournament. I'd pipe in music and certainly we'd have food. So for your people, uh, I need to know if we can. I think the account is $1,500. I'm looking to see if we can take some of that to pay for the food. There's basically 15 full-timers, 33 part-timers, three select men. You're talking about 50 people. And, and when do you think of doing it? September 10th, the Thursday after Labor Day. Maybe they work till 1, then we bring them down the beach from 1 to 4. And is this going to include the... Uh, the, the what? Board, like the planning board? No, no, it would be too many, I think. Just with the part-timers, full-timers, uh, there'd be about 50. So I need a decision from you guys. And again, I know uh, they were, Diane was saying they didn't use it last year, but it was used to, to kind of buy awards or something for volunteers. Is that yeah, my correct? $1,500, but it's, it's to give recognition. Yeah. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to use some of it for the next few weeks. I'm sure, and we've used some in the past. So I, I think we have to check with Diane to see what we've got in there, and, and also you just asked us about it today. You're not gonna get a decision today. I'm, I'm going to, to speak up. <clears throat> I said you just asked us about it today. Yeah. You're not gonna get a decision today. Okay. Because we can't operate that quickly. So we have to talk about it. Yep, that's fine. So by, I would think by next week or yeah, week after. Yeah. That's it. Any, any other questions? Have to head to my next. Be safe. Yeah. Take care, everyone. All right. Stay at the beach. I'm going to the beach right now. Good idea. Hi, Tyler. Come on. Thank you for waiting. Hi. Thank you. Welcome back. Sir. Thank you. Good morning. How are you doing? Pretty well. Sounds like you guys are working through a lot of the new challenges. And well, sounds like you have a few new challenges. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, thanks. A smile on your face. Yes. Yep. Payroll. Uh, payroll. Yes. Yep. We're actually pretty busy, so um, things are good. I have a good business partner. I've known him for 25 years. So uh, another engineer. So I'm very excited. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I I gathered that. Um, I spoke with Karen, and it sounds like uh, Horizons feels that they're they're okay uh, finishing yeah, up yeah. finishing up that project. <clears throat> I'm here to see if you guys want to continue to use me um, and the new firm. Uh, although you invited me, but I'm assuming mm -hmm. that's yep. that's, uh, yeah. that's what that's it's what about. You're discussing. Okay. Um, Was there any money left, or is that all set? Uh, yes. We had a Warren article this year for. Nineteen mile, Nineteen mile Bay improvement. Yeah, that's not your. You know, you're talking about Union Wharf, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is all of it's been used? Excuse me. Um, nope. Union Wharf says there's a balance of two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's on the yeah. page. On Lake Street. On uh, Lake Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might have nice. covered about 19,000 to my name. I don't know if that includes covered. And we did, and I, I want to say that we, I, I don't have the report on that, but I, I did. I, I didn't want to interrupt, but I, I did. Um, I spoke with Diane and um, recall that there were, uh, when we first approached this project, there were the two sites. There was Lake Road and Union Wharf. And 
early on when we first got into this, um, we got some resistance from DES. I think we decided to hold off on Lake Road initially and pursue Union Wharf just to go for that one first. Right. It's a higher priority, and whatever the state approved there would inform what we what we would do subsequently. Exactly. Um, so we haven't really touched. So the Lake Road budget, we might have the first meeting we had, we might have split between the two projects. But that Lake Road project, I think, has almost the entire budget left. As far as Union Wharf, my understanding is we have thirteen thousand nine hundred and eighty-five dollars left in that budget, which I feel is adequate for what we need to do to complete the work. And that was what I was hoping to do is to come here and tell you that, you know, you transition, it doesn't it shouldn't cost you more. I I, I I'm committed to making sure we can do the work mm -hmm. for what was remaining in the budget. So if if the numbers I understand be um correct what here. What was your number again? 13985 13985 and 50 cents as I Yeah, what what's what's remaining? This is um, encumbered funds FY 2019. Mhm. Mm yeah. And and I guess the basis for that and this is where I may not be absolute. I understood it to be 19200 was in, encumbered. Then there was a subsequent report that we did where we did some borings at the request of DES. They wanted to do borings and alternatives analysis to mm -hmm. support that. And that was an additional $5,600. Um, all of that $5,600 was spent doing this, and a portion of that nineteen two was spent, and that's what's resulting of the thirteen mm -hmm. ninety five. So we have about 14000 That's That should be more than adequate to, to finish the project. Under Union Wharf design contract, that account has been spent. According to my okay. encumbered funds, yeah, and, and I'm not sure how um, the the terminology, I, yep. I guess. Yeah. Um, but if that's correct, there's well, we would have spent the encumbered funds before we spent the warrant. Mm -hmm. You had two sets of encumbered funds. Yes, we had. Yeah. Six hundred of a report and nineteen something. Nineteen thousand two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I and, and perhaps then that what was termed uh, that the engineering design or was that was that fifty six hundred that yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Nonetheless, I, I think you have plenty of budget to do the remaining design and permitting, and I think what where we left off um, when I met with the board last, um, I was to leave and ask. There was a discussion about continuing. At, at Union Wharf, continue, we had gotten verbal approval uh, subsequent to the production of this the day before. Uh, Rainy Pelletier had told us that he uh, he agreed with the sheet piling approach being the best approach. That it was um, it wouldn't require mitigation, which was a big ex potential expense on the horizon if we, um, in, and also did not require grant and right. And I think the board uh, conceptually said, hey, we really want to proceed with the sheet pile has better dirt, according to the report, had better durability, uh, you know, longevity was going to last longer, frankly, be less expensive because it's just easier to construct and have to deconstruct the whole work. So I think it was a no brainer to go with that. But I think we left the meeting where there was a discussion about continuing wanting to extend what we had proposed was just repairing the the failing portion of the wooden bulkhead, which is uh, roughly half, maybe two thirds of the wharf length of the wharf was that bulkhead. And I think uh, as we left there, I was to look and see if DES, if we could continue that sheet piling around. I got a price <coughs> from a sheet piling contractor for um, kind of design build for that portion. Um, and I do not have that number handy, and I need to reach back out to him. But I think it was not out of the question. It was not a, a exceedingly high price. Much of the cost is mobilization. So I think the discussion at the time was, let's call DES and see if they're on board with that. And I did do that. I did contact Randy Pelletier, who was integral early on meeting uh, with Councillor Cryens. Um, uh, Rainy Pelletier has some flexibility, of course, in, in some of these situations where we have a grandfathered structure, structures built long, long uh, prior to uh, DES wetland rules. And he said, I don't think you need a grant and right for the project. Um, no mitigation. We can go with this approach. It does exceed a little bit some of the DES requirements, but I'm not on board with a dredging on the other side because he thought it would 
be problematic. And he said, as far as the canopy, potentially you could do the canopy. That was, again, kind of a sidecar to this project was a seasonal canopy at the end. I asked him about extending that out. He said, well, I kind of gave you a gift here in letting you do this first one without it. And I really don't feel comfortable extending the uh, sheet piling around because the main reason I'm allowing you to do this is because the work is falling apart, whereas the, the remaining uh, portion of the work that extends out further is, is, a, con is a pretty solid concrete foundation. Um, I was there just this morning before this meeting just checking um, the foundation. There are some you know, cracks and there's some under, undercutting, some spalling of the concrete. Um, it's certainly not in as bad a shape as the, the timber wharf. Um, so I don't know how much progress I'll be able to make with Rainey. And I think last, I think maybe the board was going to come up with a letter to Rainey and I think Chip, you and I were going to look at that and maybe right. send it off. My language might be a little strident for Rainey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm happy to there's, assist. There's no scientific evidence that there would be any impact whatsoever. So yeah. it's, and he did give us a gift. We actually gave him a gift in saying, okay, we'll we'll not go for a grant and write. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's what we have to do. I mean, I really don't understand the politics of this, which is all it is. There's no scientific basis for anything. We're looking to get the whole war done. We're going to have to do it again. So I, I guess what I hear you in, in terms of what appears to be his thought process is that sheet piling to ramp the existing deteriorating structure that needs some significant work is something that he thinks he can defend to anybody that comes to him and says, why well, just let him do this? Mm -hmm. But given that we have a concrete structure that isn't it to the same level of deterioration, he uh, is feels more vulnerable in terms of being able to. Is he defending it? Who, I, I don't. I, 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 I think you're characterizing his, right. his, his feelings correctly. Right. I, so, I agree, though. I and, and from our perspective, uh, one of the the uh, attractive pieces of sheet piling all, all the way around is it it gives us a good consistent surface. Uh, to tie boats up to, uh, to come and go. It uh, encapsulates the existing concrete that while it's not falling apart, at, at some point it's going to need some work. Uh, and it presents an, an aesthetic appearance of the whole wharf uh, for what it is, which is a, a, a long surface out into the water that, uh, that provides access uh, to the lake, mm -hmm. um, so um, you know, it, not unlike, uh, let's say you have uh, a, a building and you got 150 year old structure and you have a 60 year old addition on it, mm -hmm. and the 150 year old structure needs some significant stuff, so you're going to do a total rewrap at the outside of that and oh by the way while we're at it if we rewrap the 60 year old piece that doesn't need as much but when you in the end you end up with something that that aesthetically and functionally is to the same level uh, to the eye and in terms of longevity going forward that you wouldn't have if you just ignored the 60 year old piece fix the older piece up and then say, well, someday we may have to deal with this again. Uh, once we're mobilizing to get the job done, why not? Mm -hmm. So and we're talking 2021 prices versus 2035 well, prices. Right. Or, 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 or who knows who knows what, but a significant part of a job like this, uh, and I think you just verified it, is mobilizing, getting the equipment, getting the materials to the site, whether you uh, use 60% uh, more materials than you would on the smaller job, the, the basic cost of the job is pretty much the same because it's getting everything there, 
uh, getting the personnel and uh, uh, in, in being in position to to get it done. You know, only have one disturbance. Yep. I agree. I, I think environmentally, I think there's there's zero difference and po possibly a, an advantage to doing this over, if you looked at it over time, to doing this entire project. I think the I think that the base challenge of this is that even if one is if one is to obtain a grant and right, which at this point you do not need to for that portion of the project, if you do need a grant and right, let's say for that additional area, DEA it's not just a vote of the governor and council. It's actually DES has to first um, uh, uh, make their recommendation support yeah support the project, and then the councilors vote on it. But what's interesting uh -huh. is in the end, the project that we propose for the sheet piling, um, you know, the, the, the big issue here is that they can approve projects that it allow uh, land to extend, a retaining wall on land to extend six inches. Originally, in the original sheet pile design, it was extending up to 20 inches out just by the time you're all said and done with with uh, how you affix the sheet pile. But the manner we have it looked at, uh, that we have we have it now, a portion of it, the sheet piling would be flush to the wall and not extend at all, and a portion would extend 12 inches. So on average, <laughs> it is about six inches. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone can make a case that somehow environment, there's less habitat on sheet pile than there is concrete. The two are relatively inert. Now, if you were looking to extend it past the portion of the dock, you know, there's the dock that it, there's the, you know, the, the, the wharf recall is three components. It's gravel, then it's concrete, and then there's a dock at the very end. And I don't think you guys were contemplating that. I think it was really just to extend out to, to um, enca encapsulate the, the concrete. There's no environmental difference. And again, a case could be made that doing the project once rather than disturbing the ground mm -hmm. and, the, and stopping traffic and you know, use of that for a year. Uh, so. I can try to make a case again for that if you'd like. Um, I yeah, suspect I'll get the same like result, but I, I can try. And we, I, can, we can give away the dredging without prejudice because mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to dredge a dredge after you have the sheet piling in anyway. Right. And I can yeah, imagine yeah. how we'd go about sheet piling the wooden part. But I, I yeah. think if I don't you think look it's at the uh, overall impact, I mean, I mean, run the numbers to figure out what the actual square footage of impact versus uh, six inch overall impact. I, I think. And I don't, you may think that you need to have, and probably historically you should have, DES is in premature on recommending a grant right to the government council. So that's why we have the third basic form of government, and that's court. Because I'm, I'm not going to let Rainy Pelletier drive the bus completely. That just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. that, that's sort of like what Dick Flynn used to do at the Department of Safety. You can't have a little kingdom. Mm -hmm. They have to have accountability. Yeah. And unless they can come up with some significant impact that they're trying to avoid, mm -hmm. I don't see that well, there is an appeal process too, yeah. but I mean, they have to, obviously they have to establish the impact or the proposed impact. It's just not a matter of establishing this with the rule. And if we have, we won't have exceeded the rule anyway. So. Well, I can ask. I guess would you guys like me to proceed again with a phone call to him, reminding uh, Rainey about that that that. Unlike the initial proposal where we were uh, exceeding the state standards of a six foot reface, this is on average meets that six foot standard. Now, again, back up that, that where it's it's not considered land until there's a grant and right, but so there is kind of a sequential step. But I think let's get practicality here would say, uh, you know, if you're supporting a project due to the need and due to the demonstrated cost effectiveness of this being the, the best approach, the least in, impacting alternative, um, 
you know, you should be able to support a grant and write if needed to extend out further if we had to go through that and therefore we could meet this average six inch extension. Or you just support it practically as you have. Yeah. I mean, maybe get a breakdown from the installer as to what the cost is for setting it up, you know, getting everything together, and then the actual cost of the sheet pile. Mm -hmm. And if we, I mean, as Bill was saying, if we can avoid a third cost impact by doing a one fell swoop as opposed to two fell swoops. Yeah. Yep. I think okay. there's some positive things going on here. You're a native of Tuftamboro. You were a kid here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, you speak firsthand, and that's valid. Yeah. Um, I like your approach. One of the things I like with you doing business is you're like Stan Tech and a few other, no, Mr. Allen and whatnot. DES says, hey, that guy speaks DES. Mm -hmm. that, those are the comments that have come back to me. Mm -hmm. That's why we've asked you to, to come in. A couple of comments. I agree with them. Call it bundling when we build. It certainly makes sense to do one project while the excavator is there, while you're watering things. Uh, uh, you know, when you buy 10,000 square feet or something, uh, two by fours is yeah. cheaper per two by four than 5,000. Mm -hmm. um, it's a multi purpose area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. You know, how do we get out on the lake to our 40 islands 24-7? If nothing else, the fire department, and it works well because it seems to be equal distance. Boy, you can get right out there. Isn't it amazing? We can get to some other places on the lake quicker than Maybe those towns can. Emergency management grant money available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. thing up. There's the environmental area thing. That mm -hmm. takes an unreasonable amount of pounding from Mother Nature. Yeah. Jack uh, Parsons is down there with the thermalators and whatnot, and sure enough, our two docks, if not every year, it's not unusual, oh, it broke off, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's big bucks, and we have a road agent with a bit, uh, a, uh, a barge. There's personalities involved. I understand, because I have family members who work in high positions in the state of New Hampshire, head of departments. And I can understand that when a call comes down or a supervisor or something, there are 90 degrees and they have to be responsible and they don't always have to give us an answer of why they changed course a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone has an opinion about uh, dredging, I can understand mm -hmm. that that might be yeah. uh, someone's permission. The other thing is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Sheet piling is the cheapest of the three alternatives, correct? It is, yeah. Okay, I'm a member of the fire department, have been for a number of years. Last year, uh, first of all, when we go out on the boat and we're lifting equipment and you're in a hurry and you're bringing the stretcher back and you, we're stepping over mm -hmm. in moving water, right. lifting your fiber, mm -hmm. it is an absolute dangerous situation. Last year, I wish I had a camera. A party boat came in on the other side, it was bouncing a little bit from the wakes, not like this. A little girl holding her small dog, the dog went down, fortunately got the dog out, but guess what? I don't mean to be crude, but I will be dramatic. The dog came that close to being crushed between the piling and, and the hull of the boat. Mm -hmm. Could have been that little girl. Right. It's an accident waiting to happen. Yep. And. Um, I'm not playing to the camera, but it made a point on me that we need to go yep. to the sheet pile. Yep. Yep. Thank you for listening. Well, the other oh, thank, thank you. problem we should be reinforced is that the state uses that fear as well. Mm -hmm. it is, it's not only our fire boat and our police. Yep. Fishing game is the state and uses yep. it mm -hmm. and the marine control. And we make it available because it's nice to have those boats where the fish and game officer can hop right there and mm -hmm. follow our boat out uh, yeah. you know, and, and whatever. And, and it is it's a mutual aid issue. Good point. Okay. So would you like me to, to pursue that? Does anyone, I mean, yeah, do you, you guys want to draft the letter and I look at it or do you want me to talk to Rainey again and I, I can, and I, 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 I think you ought to give Rainey a call if okay. we yep. can use the letter. Yep. Um, draft up something in an email and okay. back and forth. Yep.
Do you need a contract signed with us or uh, which, oh. of which your billable hours are or anything like that? Yeah, well, my rate has gone down, so that's helpful. <laughs> You're not carrying as much overhead. Huh? I'm not. No. So, uh, uh, so, so that's good. Um, and okay. yes, I will. I wanted. I didn't want to presuppose you were so. If your heart's going down, it's your value going down. That's the question. <laughs> no, I, I think what what's happening is whereas before it was my rate plus someone else who might do drafting at a lower rate, now it'll be mostly me and my business partner are mm -hmm. the same, but the cost will be the same. And I would argue that, uh, frankly, with me doing all the work from beginning to end, you get a better product than when you have multiple people who are involved so uh sure, that's kind of the way we that makes sense. Sure. that's kind of our, our our business model right now is have we gonna, have we missed anything in our conversations or our questions to you so you're going to no us no with a, i'll with an agreement i will yep yep i'll yep. yep i'll i'll send that out um i just uh it might be a week i'm still working through some of our insurance uh, my my business my business partner he had has a, had a firm for 15 years and he's change the name of that, kind of effectively dissolve that. And so now we're transitioning. So we're waiting for our insurance certificates to come in, which all meet and exceed down standards. Um, but that will, that should come in, unfortunately, sure it's agents on vacation this week. So that should be in by next Monday. So if we can wait that long, um, it doesn't mean that I, I'm, I'm still happy to contact uh, DES in the meantime, we don't need to wait, but in terms of uh, me doing any billable work um, that would I would wait till uh, till next week. So yeah, I would send that out. We just need to get the design finalized. Your yeah. Yes, finalized. Permit finalized. So we can go forward in March. Yeah. yeah. This it, it, essentially the hardest parts. You know, we're working through the hardest parts. The design is pretty straightforward, and the permitting should be pretty straightforward. So. Once, just, every, once everybody agrees, give, gives it the nod and says, yes, yeah, that's right. Work. That's and, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I will, um, I'll give him a call or email him and um, report back to you guys and, and send you down a contract. Sure, sure. Thank, right. pleasure, thank you. Please be safe. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much for your time. Do we need to take a break just to stretch our legs or move along? I'd, let's, I'd, I'd, let's, let's, I'd say let's go. Yeah, let's move on. Let's keep, keep okay. moving. Excuse me, could you take the conversation outside? The camera picks it up. Thank you. Uh, first uh, is notice of appointment of Heather Brown to Conservation Commission through June 2023. I'll move approval. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. Please take the conversation outside. Our next notice of appointment, Ethel Hug, known as Penny, to a member of the Budget Committee. I'll move approval. March 2021. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> next is from uh, our assessor, assessor reference the Lot 41-2-4-24, uh, the uh, he recommends an abatement of $2,100. Getting a little late in the day for the abatement. When are, when are they going to end? I mean, they had to apply by what, March 1st or whatever. This was received one thirteen twenty. So I'll move approval. Do you want to look at it? No, I just want to know when they're going to end. I mean, it's one thirteen twenty was January, which was seven months ago, and now we're getting an abatement in front of us today. What's the holdup? That's that's and I'm gonna. No. Saying you're holding it up. No, no. I, I can go through it. And I just. I guess that's a question that that we need an answer to. Yeah. That's all. But it's yeah. that doesn't affect this particular uh, transaction. I noticed that the abatement mm -hmm. request four twenty one twenty. You see a second one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is 3-0. Hmm? Well, if it keeps it around, Chief. Yeah, if uh, if not eating breakfast keeps us moving along, I'd say let's keep going. Uh, next is a notice of intent to cut wood or timber. And this is, is this a supplemental? That's correct. Uh, I'll move approval. Okay. All those, Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Today's the 27th. All day. Okay. Put all the rest right in the folder. Sure. Just put those in the red ones there. Uh, there's a note from Karen just uh, talking about getting ads in the paper and also when she's going to be on vacation. Anything to add, Karen? Uh, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Seven fourteen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that do you want to hold another police station information session on August 24th? That's that's fine with me. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, correspondence from Phil Bennett. We talked to the chief about it. The, the EOC funding. Uh, Jack Widmer about the fund balance for the school district in response to the um, letter sent by the town of Effingham. Uh, next is July 23rd, he received a letter from the superintendent of schools about using the school on election day. Kind of self-explanatory. Yeah, but it requires a response from us. Okay. Right. So and I, Dan Dan has uh, has has drafted some uh, uh, some response. So I I think this is something that needs to we need to deal with next Monday. Okay. All right. I I mean I. Well, it's Dan. No. Well, he needs to work. With it's our call because we're the ones that provide the polling place, but he knows the stuff that he needs. So okay. I, I would suggest that this week we put together uh, a, a draft of a response to her that we can then finally approve or mark up and approve next Monday okay. to get back to him. Right, yeah. right. I mean, there are a number of moving parts and that, that need to be addressed. I'm, I'll be happy to work with you on that. Okay. Now, Dan, I'm, I'm out of town starting tomorrow, but I'm available by phone, so that's no big deal. And Dan has made some suggestions on cleanliness and cleanup. Right. Uh, this is from the uh, Office of the Commissioners. What, what commissioners? The county commissioners. Uh, a supplemental appropriation hearing on July 27th, which is today. today. Yep. yep. This is uh, a July 17th letter about drought information and lawn watering restrictions. We don't have town water, right? No. What you do with your well is your business. That's what I thought. I show right yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, this is from Lakes Region Planning, 10-year transportation mm -hmm. uh, project proposals. We get it every year. Yep. Uh, on July 10th, there's a letter from Steve Wingate that summarizes 
Gene Kelly, president of Mirror Lake Protective Association, and talking about a trail on Libby Park. And he has negotiated uh, and talked about that. And, mm -hmm. and I, his comment is that uh, he's willing to work with people and craft um, with something with all people. We have, we have in the budget, I believe, in our legal. We added money to the survey that line. Yes. And probably we should get that done. Sure. I was down there not too long ago, and the fellow that was in here from Wolfboro, Shane, who's next door, was in piling brush and whatnot up in the, in the right away, off the on our side of the right hmm. away. I know you stacked some firewood there, so. Yeah, I think we just need to make it clear where the line is and where the line is not. Yep. And he was using that as a second driveway. We may want to have the road agent put a boulder at the end of that or something. I mean, I know the snow viewers like to come through there. The old Indian mm -hmm. carry. Right. So we have to be careful of that, but it, it has been abused. I also got a... a uh, I'm trying to remember the, who, who offered it, but I believe it was. Um, I have to remember, I thought it was John McNamara, but don't hold me to that. That there is a dead tree lying down there that needs to get hauled away. That brush that Seamus put there has got to get hauled away. And he offered to do it for free. That's a nice thing. Great. Um, next correspondence is Donna Lane sent us uh, Marilyn Stacy's comments um, about the issues that we yep. heard, of, heard about earlier. Mm -hmm. The municipal municipal bond bank gave its uh, multi-year rates. Uh, there's a letter from Rick. Is it Highland? Reference HB 1111 signed by the governor has to do with broadband. And that, that has to do with municipalities uh, bonding money to right. support the infrastructure, so right? That one alternative is for 10 towns to join together to do one project, but there's no, there was no uh, enabling legislation that would allow that to happen. I mean, the towns had to do everything individually. We ran into the same issue when we were talking about workforce housing, mm -hmm. which in a county with 40,000 people is a lot more manageable in one area than, I mean, similar to a city of 40,000 people, you wouldn't right. spread it all over in town. Uh, next, the Merrill Lake Protective Association will have a meeting Saturday, August 15th. Is that virtual only? Uh, yes, it is. I don't have capability of. Pardon? I don't have capability of uh, listening virtually. But if anyone else wants to attend, um, I, I may or may not. But if we're attending virtually, I'm not sure we have to post it anyway. Right. Yes. Uh, the next is from Clay Gallagher. You mentioned Tuftonboro Island Day went off as planned. Uh, from Clay, new bailer update. Um, the circuit breaker shutoff box was installed and I was there yesterday and the new bailer has been installed. Uh, next is a request for proposal. Um, Steve and uh, Larry and Clay are re reviewing the uh, contract for uh, environmental study of flight at the uh, uh, transfer station. Right. That's um, with David Hallwine. Excuse me. So that's a draft for you. So I think a couple months ago, Larry and Clay were pressured to have something almost final. Uh, 
Basin last Thursday. Um, we had several members of the planning board there, as well as some conservation commission personnel. Uh, it was a um, a lot of it was a recap of what we saw when we were there two years ago. Uh, they're closer to being ready to go into the next piece of this, uh, and uh, I thought it was a good show and tell. Um, they will be uh, uh, presenting a package for planning board review in the in the fall. I mean, it's got to, it, it will have to come to planning board for site plan review before they do so anything. Is their intention to put wells in Tufton Bra? Their their intention is to capture what's in the breakout on the Tufton Bra side, and it will be diverted back to their existing catchment system back into uh, what they've done as a pilot being scaled up to right. to to reincorporate the breakout water below ground so but the, the drain drainage system if you will is all going to run it back to to where they're working on the water it's just capturing the breakout that's happening in Tufton Borough and run it back across the line. So they're going to have to alter their permit to get this design approved? How's that work? Well, they're working with DES to get it. Yeah. Before they build it, they're going to have agreement from DES that they're going to get the permit. I mean, that's, uh, that's why they're doing all this stuff. Is to well, it certainly would be nice if we get to participate in the permitting process because we're still kind of on hold on testing. Mm -hmm. and. If they're going to try something new, it would be nice to have some participation from Wolfboro on the testing of the, right. down, of the downstream. So that was that was one item. As I say, they will be coming to <clears throat> the planning board, uh, and I'm not exactly sure when they're going to be ready. But I did tell Dave, I recommended to him that they come in and have a preliminary meeting with the planning board with what they're going to present before they actually make the application. Having observed these things in the past, it just goes more smoothly when you sit down and have a preliminary discussion and somebody can say, well, you know, I don't see this in here. What about this? What about that? Because once the application's in, then, you, then the clock's running in terms of when it has to be dealt with. And uh, so then you sort of uh, uh, fighting uphill. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, back, and we've spent quite a bit of time on it, maybe not enough at this point, uh, William Road. Uh, we talked the other day uh, about some concerns of somebody, uh, and Jim is going to put together his budget for what it's going to take to get uh, some maintenance improvements made so that he can maintain the road. Um, we have a notice going in the paper, right, about uh, the private donation. What? I just have to confirm that date with Mr. Allen to make sure everything works out for him. I had a message on this morning, so as soon as I confirm that, I'll get that. Yeah. Um, right. So, <clears throat> Uh, the there were there are two two questions.
questions that had come up, and, and I don't know the answers to, and I think they're, they're both matters of law, maybe one of you guys does. One is that uh, we talked about a betterment assessment for any cost in excess of money that's donated. Uh, the mechanics of that is, uh, is what I don't have a good understanding of in terms of let's say that we are going to assess to cover additional costs. Can we spend that money even though it's not budgeted? Uh, that, that would have to be in a future year. Right. Uh, right. I think what Jim gets this year is whatever Kurt and Alan throw into the pot. Right. And then he plows and stone, then we go to town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and presumably, if there's costs in excess of that, that we can find money somewhere yeah, I mean, to, to, to cover. Sort of watch it has to be within the current budget. So the other question that came up, and, and it was a point of discussion while we were there, is as he does this improvement and he's removing material, uh, if uh, it, it's acceptable to uh, use it in areas on the non-maintained portion of the road beyond where we're going to be turning it back to class five. Uh, as, as a convenience uh, in terms of disposing of material. Um, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's my thought that that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, that given that there is uh, allowance within the law, the law for some work on class six right. without embracing it as being town maintained again. And given that, you know, it's it's a matter of, it's a dumping site basically for this stuff. So we don't have to haul it as far. We don't ex incur as much expense in getting rid of it. So it, it sort of generates a double think, benefit. Yeah, I think if we could, if we could um, um, itemize the savings, I don't, yeah. I don't think that there's a, I'm personally, I don't think there's an issue there. We can check with Sager. Maybe. Yeah. Or I would suggest we check with the uh, Municipal Association first. Uh, see what, good, they, good point. What, what their folks say. And uh, there. I know the lady that's down there that has trouble getting into her house would certainly appreciate it. She well. sold it. Oh, she did. Okay. Yeah. So it's not no longer an issue for her. <laughs> That's all I have today. It's under a postcard. Yep. Um, in our yellow folders, we have got unpaid receivables. Right. Is there something we want to talk about at our meeting, or do we have to talk about it in non-public? Uh, I see yeah. some names that we recognize there. We have to talk about it in non-public. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is now. This is uh, a list of potentially tax uh, uh, properties that will be going to tax deeding on August 18th. Yes. Uh, and there are six, seven, eight, 17 parcels that are over three years uh, in arrears on taxes. Uh, yeah, I see so, how. Okay. And, and my, uh, my recollection as to how we've done it in the past is the deeding date is the 18th of August. And so we should act on it in our meeting most close to that date because some of these people will pay their taxes between now and then. Right, so that would be the tenth. The tenth of August is the is our meeting this this, mm -hmm. uh, and and we'll probably have some uh, up, yeah. updates from the tax yep. collector right. before so that. Right, we can reach out to a few of those people we have agreements with. We can just right, out what's going on. a little nudging, right? Right. Then I have nothing right. under the uh, selectman's update. Other business. 
Anybody on the line? Joe, did you have anything for public input? No, the uh, selectmen covered it all. Uh, I'm just listening. Thank you. Be safe, Joe. Thank you. Members of the public wish to speak? Would you give your name to the secretary? Pardon? Would you give your name to the secretary, please, and well, speak? Stacey. Yep. And I'm glad that uh, I got here now because in the information you had there, there was something from me, and I forgot to include it in this information that I said, so it's part of that. Would you just make a copy available to the secretary? You yep. have it. Okay. okay. Yep. You have that copy. I, I wanted to be sure I got here on time. Is there anything you want to add to that uh, written information? This is it. In other words, there were two newspaper articles. Um, Do you want the secretary to make a copy of it so you can keep the original? Oh, I, I did that at the library yesterday. Okay. But um, I do need some form of receipt that I gave you this today because it's due today. Sure. Oh, I see you have to this is the letter to Lloyd, and it is about, I am objecting to the project in uh, North Country Village, sure. both of the um, objections, two of them. Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, I need some kind of proof that I need to see today and get this due today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm completely lost on the deal. Don't even try to understand. Okay. Okay, do we have any other business and do we need to go into non public for anything? I have not looked for this. Um, you got you a non Anything you want to deal with in non public? I didn't see anything that we needed to deal with today. No. Okay, you didn't need to discuss those before Jackie does an action. Okay. No, no. no. <coughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we, it would be nice if Jackie would reach out or if you would reach out people that we have an agreement with to find out what the status of that is. Okay. Because yeah. I, I know there's one on there that needs to, and I understand COVID and all yeah. that craziness. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else in public session? Then reviewing the contract, the proposed contract on the cell tower. Do you guys want to go through it as well? Um, are, are you done? I'm pretty well done, yeah. I, yeah. When you are, uh, are, are complete, I'll just leave it in the office and I'll come in and yep. yep. spend the day in, 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 in the envelope. Yep. It would be nice, I think, to have. Is there anything you'd like us to put? attention to well at some point in time we've got to settle on a price but there's I made some notes in the margins but I think we need to have our attorney come in at some point right and we don't need to have these the ye fellow I guess is so what we may want to do is have a telephone conference with the attorney rather than pay him to drive up here from Mexico so I mean, it's, oh, he's an excellent. I yeah. they're in there. Well, they have several offices, but the telecom ones are out of Exeter. Has it got to the point where, now that Rick Sager is off vacation, that they have him come in? No, no, Rick's not really involved in this. We've got a DTC is working right. on. What I'm thinking is we <coughs> have a number of projects that Rick is working on. Is there anything that at the six month interval uh, that we can urge him? One way or the other, or I don't know that there's one, one way or the other, or is there nothing pending? So maybe what we should have them do is send us an update on what Yeah, because I, I get kind of lost in the back and forth with Jeremy. Yep. The yeah. time has just come for adjudication, right? Right. right. 
Yeah, but I don't know when that's happening anymore. Right. Because there's all this back and forth with counterclaims. And all right. Okay. So, so maybe I'll, why don't you ask Karen when she gets down over here just to poke Rick and give yeah. him, and get him to send us a status update on everything he's working on for us. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm sorry, I didn't hear last. So when uh, when next you talk to Rick Taylor, okay. can you just have him give us a status? Update. It doesn't have to be a update, but just what he's currently working on for the panel. Okay. Sure. Please action. Okay. All right. Anything else? Public or non-public? Gentlemen. I'll move adjournment. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice job.